What's up everyone, my name is Corbin Dunn and this is my new workshop. What I want to do is help answer your questions about workshop layout and design by taking a look at what I did and describing why I did the things I did. I've been working on this for quite a while, which is why I haven't been doing any other videos on anything else really interesting. And I'm excited to have it just about done. It's a huge mess because everything isn't quite put away or organized, but I want to show you guys what it's become and start making some stuff. The first thing to discuss is the overall shop layout and the actual size of the building. My building is 60 feet long by 30 feet wide. It's a very simple rectangle because I knew it would be easy to build and more affordable to build. My house didn't have a garage, so about 22 feet of it is dedicated to a two-car garage. The rest is for the workshop. So for building a new workshop, one of the things I had to figure out was how tall do I want the ceilings? Ideally, I was going to do it at 12 feet and then have a flat ceiling on the top, but that was more expensive to build, and so instead I did 10 feet and then the cathedral ceiling to give me a lot of space up in the middle. I think it worked out pretty well because the 10 feet's nice and high around everywhere. And it also allows me to have a back storage room which has an eight foot ceiling and gives me more vertical space above that for storage or work or whatever I want in the future. I separated the building into three areas. There's the two car garage and, and then there's a small metal shop area in the back. And these are enclosed in the top. So they have a complete ceiling and floor system above it. And my thought is that I could use the area above those rooms for storage or even make them into more usable space at some time in the future. Now, since I'm primarily the woodworker, the focus of my shop is the table saw and everything was laid out kind of based on that location. So the table saw itself is relatively in the center of my workshop area for the wood shop. And what I really wanted was to have space in front of it and space behind it so I could rip large pieces of wood. And I can rip a 12 foot piece of wood without it intersecting with anything. If I really need larger, or if you have a smaller workshop, just incorporate it so that you can have doors on the opposite side. Really, you only need it to be one side. You can open doors, rip a large piece, and then you still can uh, work with that in a smaller shop. I did that for many years. The saw itself is a saw stop, three horsepower professional cabinet saw, which I've had for quite a while. Great saw. I've already actuated the blade trip mechanism once by cutting some metal um, in the past week. <laughs> and behind it is an old outfeed table that I made a long time ago. Could use some updating, but for now, I'm just going with what I have. Now for me, the next most important machine was a planer and the same thing, I wanted to have space in front of it and space behind it so I could plane large pieces of wood. Dust collection goes up here, which I'll talk about in a second. Of course, in any shop, you need to deal with dust collection when you're cutting wood. And I have my grizzly dust collector in the back corner. And the reason it's in the corner is because I intend to box it in at some point. And I'm going to box it in for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to be quieter. And two, I can actually make a filtration system to keep it from getting a lot of dust back inside the shop. There's another way to solve this, which is what I did in my old shop, was the dust collector was effectively outside, venting to the outside, and in its own little enclosed area. That worked great in a warm climate, but here in Truckee, California, it's a little cold in the winter, and I didn't want to have a lot of heat get lost. Now, one of the problems with having your table saw or a planer in the middle of a shop is how to deal with dust collection. You could put some tubing in the ground, which I thought about, but the trouble is, is I change my mind all the time about where I want stuff, and I didn't want to be limited by where I decided at the time of construction to put some tubing down. So instead, I ran it up above in the air over here so I can walk under it and down and adjacent to the planer so it can suck a lot of stuff up with a big 
a big six inch piece of PVC. I'm not gonna talk about grounding PVC, that's a whole nother subject. And then it goes down to a four inch port onto the ground over to the table saw. It, the, there's pluses and minuses to having your tubing on the ground. Of course, if it's on the ground, you might trip on it. Tripping on it's not great, but I really don't like it up here on the corner of my saw, which really annoyed me at my previous shop. And I eventually threw it in the ground. So if it bothers me, I can try moving it up into the air. But for now, the tube's on the ground. So this is my bandsaw location. And the table saw is right here. And I'm trying to include it in the shot to emphasize that I can still cut wood here without interfering in the bandsaw and try and maximize space. So I chose this location here. It's a little bit away from the wall so that I could put things in the wall for storage. Right now, a bunch of paint and other stuff stored here. And looking at the bandsaw from the front, I want to be able to cut large pieces on the bandsaw too, so I have a large amount of space in front of it and a large amount of space behind it in order to work around it. Behind the bandsaw and kind of slightly in the way is a sander, a belt sander and a disc sander. And I can actually move it a little bit if I need to if it gets in the way of that machine. And I think the location here is okay. I'm not sure if I'm entirely like it, but it allows me to have some things behind it too that I don't use a lot, such as the scroll saw. For woodworking, a joiner is really essential, especially if you're working with raw stock. And the joiner, you really wanna have a lot of space in front and back of it. It's fairly easy to move, so if something is blocking it, I can tweak it a little bit. Like my other machines, I decided to set a little bit of ways from the wall, and my plan is to store plywood and some other stock materials behind it. Uh, right now, the shop is still a work in progress and being set up. I don't use my drill press that often, and right now, I don't have a real good home for it, so it's kind of just living in an awkward spot until I get some more things cleaned up. But this thing could easily be shoved into a corner. Okay, behind me is my wood storage, which is currently on the ground. A lot of it's gonna be up on the wall, and it just hasn't been put there yet because I haven't had time to build some supports for it. I might store some of the slabs up above in my storage area, but nothing's been moved around because I don't really have a good way to get up there. So there's a ladder here because the ladder goes up to my storage area up above. There's some lights that could be turned on back there and that's entirely above the two-car garage. Eventually, I may have a better or easier way to get up there, but for now, it's just a ladder and storage. I've never really been a big fan of having a dead keg cross-cut saw because the table saw works so well for it, but I bought this for the construction because my table saw wasn't actually available at the time and is just so handy to have something that I can cut 45s and 90s on. So it's not an actual sliding compound miter saw. It's just a straight miter saw. I'm not sure if I'll keep it. For now, it's just sitting on a plastic table behind my table saw. This is the storage area for screws and nuts and bolts, which I tend to use a lot and want to have quick and easy access to. It could use some better organization, but for now, just kind of throwing things out so I can start making stuff. This is my main workbench that I currently have. That one over there is temporary. I made it for construction of when I was making the building. This one I built to be a little bit nicer using the table saw. It's all made from scrap lumber that I had left over from the project of building the shop. And it's just a really simple, basic, quick build. I might eventually build a nicer table, but why spend a lot of time building nice tables when I want to make other things? Behind the table are all my tools all my hand tools mainly. They're all on French cleat system, or most on French cleat system, not everything. So I can pop stuff off, take the drill bits to somewhere that I need to, or the chisels, um, tape measures, whatever. I like the French cleat system, but I don't think it's completely necessary. Some things are just simply nailed on to a board and that's it could spend hours and hours making little jigs and cleats and holders 
and it just wasn't worth my time. So nails are working to hold everything up. Quick clamp storage area. So one of the decisions that was hard for me was how to do the electrical layout. And let me talk about that. First of all, I was wondering how high do I want to put my outlets? And my outlets are, they're at 42 inches to the bottom, which I thought was a pretty good height. Some people put them at 48 because you can fit a full sheet of plywood underneath them. I think 42 is okay and you can still have it covered up a little bit and it's not a big deal. They are about four feet apart from one to the other though, so I have a lot of outlets. They're also wired so that every other one is on the same circuit. So this one and the adjacent one are not on the same circuit. So if I'm overloading one of my outlets, I can just plug into the next door neighbor and not have uh, uh, to worry about overloading it. I think that was a smart idea. All the 110 volt wiring is inside the building, in the walls, and the 220 is on the outside in conduit. And I did that because I want the ability to move my machines around. The uh, 220 machines, I sometimes change my mind where I want them, and I want the ability to, to take them, move them somewhere else, and rewire easily without having to redo the wall wiring. The other thing I had to figure out was how many outlets to put on a particular circuit. And I'm running 12 gauge wire inside the walls for all the outlets. 12 gauge is thicker, 14 gauge would be the other option, which is a little bit thinner. 14 gauge is for the lights. And I went about eight to 10 outlets per circuit, per 20 amp circuit. I think that's pretty adequate uh, because I'm not going to be using them all at the same time. Probably could go more, but eight to 10 is pretty safe. The main shop area is primarily wood stuff. And I wanted my metal shop to be free from dust. Ironically enough, I'm actually gonna be cutting a lot of wood back there. But for now, it could be separated if I needed to. So there's some doors. So sort of hidden behind the door here is my air compressor. I use some flexible aluminum tubing to run air to a lot of the areas I need it, such as the front garage area, a few of the machines in the shop itself. And a slip roll is right next to it. I rarely use this tool. I've only used it a few times and I'm not sure why I even have it, but I still have it. On the other side is a grinding station. Currently there's a cabinet underneath it that I don't know where I want to put yet. And I'll probably put some more shelves up to store more stuff at some point. Just haven't done that yet. These are my welders. I have a old Matco 200 amp MIG welder. MIG welder is like a hot glue gun for metal. I love that thing. I use it all the time. I have a TIG welder, which I don't use quite as much, but when I need to do aluminum uh, or some more fine detailed steel welding, the TIG welder works great. Up above it, is a plasma cutter, which I was using for metal art at one point, but now it doesn't get much use. Over on the other side of the welders, there's a very cheap Harbor Freight welding table. Eventually I might actually put a nice welding table in this area. Next to the little welding table, I have my cherry pick, which I use for moving some of the machines. I'd love to store it somewhere else, but for now, this is where it's going to be. And underneath is a pallet jack. The pallet jack has been essential for moving certain things like the milling machine and a lot of the other heavy stuff. My manual mill, 1990 Enco mill that I bought, I don't know, sometime in the early 2000s. And this is what really got me into doing some metal work. I love the machine. It's super hard to get here and I don't use it very often. It just, isn't needed when you have a CNC machine. Well, it's great for doing certain quick operations and it's very heavy and stable. To the side of the manual mill is my Tormac PCNC 1100. I absolutely love this machine. This machine is so versatile. I'm probably gonna be cutting more wood on it. I'd love to get a dedicated wood CNC machine. I do way more wood than I do metal. 
but its accuracy is really nice. The Tormac just has a little table setting next to it to hold the keyboard and the uh, screen monitor for it. When I'm working on the CNC machine, I want to have a lot of the tooling quick and easy to access. A lot of people will mount it on the front. I eventually want to do that, but for now it's just going to live on a table here. Eventually I'll probably put some shelves up to store things too. These cabinets just store a lot of the metalworking and CNC equipment and tooling used for the mill and the lathe. This is a South Bend 13 inch tool room lathe that I bought quite a while ago. It's from the 1950s and it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, some of the ways are worn down a bit. I had upgraded it to have a new motor because the old motor was dying. So it's a three phase motor and runs on a, a VFD. So I have a VFD in a little box, a variable frequency drive that can control it and that way I can get fine grained speeds. I can know what speeds it uh, is running at because I have a little sensor on the wall that uh, can tell me what RPMs it's doing. Not sure when I'll need such a big drill bit, but I got it with a lathe. That's two inches. Uh, look at it compared to the size of my hand. Oxycetylene welding still is very useful for brazing, so I have those tanks and set up. My horizontal bandsaw for cutting metal is kind of just lonely in the corner here. And I think I like it here, but I'm not sure. Behind it is a bunch of metal storage. I'm pretty happy with the way the lighting is in the shop. I spent a lot of time designing exactly where I wanted the lights, how many lumens per square foot, and what I thought would be bright enough. It's definitely bright enough. I actually didn't put in all of the lights because I thought it would be almost too bright. I probably could add them in because I don't think it hurt to have a little more light. I keep thinking I'm going to have things more organized, but as of yet, stuff is still kind of a mess. So this is the two car garage portion where we can have two cars, charging of my electric cars, and storage of bikes, uh, canoes, whatever other equipment. Eventually I'm going to build some shelves and make it a little more organized. So right now it's kind of, everything's just put around in wild places. So the shop does have heating. It is radiant heat, which are tubes in the ground in the cement. I had someone else put the tubes in because I didn't have time before they poured the concrete. But the whole setup for everything else I did myself, I had to figure it out and it seems to be working okay. Pretty happy with it, although it hasn't been too cold since I've actually had it put in and, uh, and been working. So that's a basic tour of my new workshop. I hope it gives you some ideas on things you can do for your own shop, some layout ideas, decisions I made for my new shop. So if you're building your own, you can incorporate some ideas. You can do whatever you think might be the best. Uh, it's just great to have more information. In fact, check out my link for my blog and my website down in the description. I have a lot more info about all the details of making the actual structure. And uh, if you want to see the plans, let me know. I can send them to you. Happy to share a lot of the information. Post comments and questions down below. I love hearing from people. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.